Hey everyone, it's Pat, and I'm back with some skill builder videos that I'm going to be doing. This is the first of a few. Um, there have been a lot of really good questions lately on the YouTube channel, so I'd like to take some time in videos to address them because I think, you know, props kind of help. And there's going to be a companion video to this one that I'm going to actually do what I'm telling you here, but at least to kind of get the question on the table and to get you guys thinking about some things to, um, you know, kind of help augment your cabinet making skills. And scribing is one of those skills which, at least to me, kind of separates the professional from the amateur. Um, it's okay to, when you have a... Um, a space like this, let's say next to a fireplace, and you build the bookcase to fit, and you're not the great scribing artist that you want to be, and you're just going to put a little tiny piece of trim along the face frame, you know, let's say from the ceiling to the floor, to kind of hide the fact that you've got some gaps in there that might be a little bit too big to cover with, uh, you know, by using caulk or something like that. So, um, but as always, we're trying to, to build our skill set to make ourselves a little bit better than we were today. So I'm going to talk about a question that was posed by Daniel, uh, one of our viewers, who basically had this kind of situation where he said, hey, I've got a, a, fire, a fireplace that sticks out about 20, a fireplace and a mantle that sticks out about 22 inches from the back wall. And I've got this space that I want to fit a built-in bookcase in, but the walls are not level or plumb rather. They're not plumb. They, the space is awkward and, you know, so he was asking, as, because in one of my videos, I, I basically told you if you're going to scribe, you want to back bevel your face frame pieces before you assemble your face frames with the pocket screws and the reason you want to back bevel is so that you have less material to remove with a sander or a saw or whatever it is you're going to be using to remove the 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 excess lumber that you need to get rid of in order for the scribe to fit and so um, he his question was really you know if I'm introducing a cabinet into this type of space you know, do I need to back bevel both sides? And the, I mean, the question is always that my answer really wanted to be, it kind of depends. It depends on how level and how plumb or how out of plumb the walls really are and how wavy they are and everything else. So um, that got me thinking. Uh, and my real answer to him was basically, you know, if you want a perfect scribed fit that looks really good and professional, like it was meant to be there, like it was built in as part of the house, um, then yeah, you want a scribed fit and not a piece of trim over it. So you do, if you're going to scribe both sides, then you want to back bevel both sides. And again, that's not a big problem because when you assemble the face frame, you're going to be doing it using pocket screws. You don't need, you don't necessarily have to have clamps to put these things together because it would be difficult to clamp, um, you know, the beveled edges or whatever. You'd be smashing one of them unless you, you know, figured out a way not to do that. So let's talk about scribing for just a, a little bit in a, in a condition like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a rectangle um, essentially here. And this rectangle um, represents obviously the space that the built-in has to fill and you can you can see that you know the built-in might be 12 inches deep so it's not going to come as far out as the edge of the fireplace or the front face of the fireplace but let's just say that this represents this rectangle represents my space so let me just group this and I'm gonna create two kind of conditions um, that you might run up against and they're really the both the same but sometimes it helps to see them um, done a little bit differently. So let me move this out a little bit and then I'll copy it uh, like so over here. And then let me ungroup or explode this guy so that I can, oops, so that I can manipulate the, the lines and everything. Okay, so let's say I've got a condition where um, I'm going to exaggerate these. Hopefully you never run into walls like this. If you do, then scribing is not the way to fix this problem. But let's say I bring one out like this, one wall. You know, if you throw a level on it, the bubble is out of plumb in such a way where it looks like the wall is leaning to the right. And 
I'm going to kind of to do the same on this side. And I'm trying to get these two things exactly parallel, um, even though they're leaning to, to one side here. Now, a lot of novice carpenters make, or novice cabinet makers rather, make this mistake. And they might go, okay, I'm going to come up here and I'm, I'm going to be a smart carpenter. And I'm going to measure this. And I get like almost 46 and 3 quarter. And I'm going to be smart and I'm going to do it at the bottom too, just to make sure of myself. And I'm... I'm not close, but let's just say for my example here that these two line widths, I measure at the top and I measure at the bottom, and they're, they're almost equal. So I might think to myself, hey, they're equal at the top, and the bottoms are all equal, so my walls must be plumb. Otherwise, they wouldn't be equal. And as you can very clearly see, that that's just not the case. Again, I'm assuming that this line is equal in distance to this line, so that I would come over here, and I would think if I measured from this wall to this wall down here and this wall to this wall up here, that if the lines are equal, well, the walls must be plumb. And in fact, all that means is the walls are parallel, but it does, does not have to mean that they are straight up and down. Even if I took a measurement in the center, because I'm a very smart carpenter and I'm thinking to myself, man, you know, two points is a straight line, but three points is a straighter one, so I'm going to measure in three different places, and then if I'm very close. So let's say just by chance, all three of these measurements I take are exactly equal. And I feel even better about myself now, because I've measured three times and I've gotten the same thing. So let's just say, we'll take the middle line just as an example. That's 47, almost 47 and a half. So let's say then I'm going to make my face frame 47 and a half inches wide. So then I come over and, again, my cabinet is perfectly plumb and square because I measured and it's 48 and whatever it is, let's say 48 and a half or whatever it is wide. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to grab this thing and then I'm going to go to fit in my cabinet. And boy, I'm going to be, I'm going to impress everybody. And I go to fit in the cabinet and I get this situation where no matter what I try to do, it won't fit. And what you're going to get is, even if you get it to fit at the bottom, because the bottom and the top might be 48 inches, or the middle might be 48 inches, you can see the width of my overlying rectangle, which represents the space, is exactly 48 inches, or 48 and a half, whatever it is, very close. So you can tell that it fits at the middle if I slide the cabinet to the middle of the opening, and it fits at the bottom if I try to just get the bottom in, and it fits at the top if I just try to get the top in. Again, it's not behaving here, so I apologize. Mouse sensitivity issue here. But you can see that it's pretty close, right? But it's never going to fit because at some point it is going to... Uh, let's see here, sorry. It, it's never going to fit exactly because at some point... Um, I'm just not going to be able to squeeze past the wall. And what this is going to do is I'm going to have a gap down here and a gap up here. But this, remember the, the slanted line here represents the wall. So anytime I'm you know, outside that slanted line, anytime I'm inside the slanted line, I'm going to have a gap. Anytime I'm outside the slanted line, I'm going to be hitting the wall. So you can see that this cabinet, there's I'm going to be miserably frustrated and not understand why this stupid thing won't fit when I measured three times and then I'll, I'll go measure again just to be sure and I'll say man that's 48 and a half let me measure my cabinet oh it's 48 and a half and both my sides are back beveled I'm ready to scribe and it's still not going to fit because the reality is you have walls that are you know in this shape of a rhombus which again I can't believe I, I got to use the word rhombus this year because I am kind of a geometry geek I just I just like it I try to solve weird geometry problems online and sometimes I'm I can and sometimes I can't but anyway you can see how that presents a problem so what do you do in this case so I'm fortunate enough to have a a laser pointer which can help me square, you know, or draw a plumb line on the floor. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set a level against each of these walls. And if I set the level against this left wall here, and I would have to pull the level out from the bottom 
to be able to make that wall plumb to where the level is in the middle of, or the bubble is in the middle of the vial. So that would tell me that the top is the top is the portion that I want to line up with to get how far out I need to go. So then I would take my laser level. You can use a plumb bob or a really long level, but I would use a laser line and I would basically start on the floor and move that laser line over, 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 boom, until the laser point is just in this top corner. And then I'm going to take a measurement of this. So this is like, let's say, well, it's 11 and 15, 16. So let's call it 12. Then I'm going to do the same thing on this side. But I'm going to do it from the ceiling because I know the level told me that, the, that, the, that I have to pull the top of the level to the left in order to get a plumb signal. So then I'm going to do it from the bottom of this corner and I'm going to shine it up here or whatever. And that's going to be my space. And so from here, I'm going to have to add nine, let's say that's nine and a half just for ease. So I'm going to have to add 12 inches and nine and a half inches to whatever the distance between my two level points are, which in this case is 30, let's say 37. So I'm going to add 37 to uh, uh, 37 to, what did we say, 37. So this is 12 plus 37 is almost 49 and then 49 plus again nine and a half is going to be 58 and a half so instead of my face frame being the width of the space which is 48 and a half I'm actually going to have to make that face frame um, the width of the of the face frame 58 and a half now you'd never have to make a face frame 10 inches over but I think you understand the point that it it is worthwhile to go ahead and make a few of these quick type of measurements and then determine what kind of shape you have. Maybe you have a perfect rectangle, but you just have some, you know, some some waves here like this, you know, or whatever it is. Well, you're going to have to compute, you know, a little bit. Maybe it's a quarter of an inch, you know, or a little bit. You throw your level on it and the level from top to bottom is perfectly plumb, shows you that it's perfectly plumb, but I might have these quarter inch or half inch spaces, uh, these gaps where the drywall has been, let's say, pulled into the stud more or across the stud more or something like that. So that's why when I make these face frames in general, um, when I'm measuring, I check very quickly the plumb. Most things are reasonably plumb, and I just make the face frame a half an inch wider total, and I back bevel both sides so that I can scribe one side and then fit in to scribe the other. And and that's pretty much you know what you have to do in cases where you know it's pretty far out like this. Again, you're not going to have something that's you know requiring you to make the face frames you know 10 inches bigger five on either side or whatever it is to get the thing to fit so that that's usually not going to happen um but you know it, it's just food for thought to help you you know become a better cabinet maker what what you need to do to kind of make sure that your face frames are wide enough such that when you do scribe them you'll fit in that space um and and measuring from left to right just isn't the same um, doesn't give you the full picture. Um, the same can be said about, let's say, let me get rid of all this stuff, these lines here. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. All right, so if I get rid of these lines, I'm going to show you one more situation here very quickly, but I'm trying to keep these videos under 15 minutes, damn it, and I'm I'm trying. Okay, so... Let's say I grab this side and I pull this over. Now I've got a trapezoid shape, really. And it could be the same. I could have a narrower top and a wider bottom or whatever. And the same thing applies, right? Like I might, I might say, um, I might measure again, uh, you know, toward the top up here. And let's just say, give me a round number. Okay, 53 and 3 quarters. And then I might measure here at the bottom, and I'm an old carpenter, so I don't want to bend all the way over to the floor. And I'm just going to measure down, eh, you know, about my knee or my shin, just to get a, a good guess. And I'm 61 and, a, you know, a little over a quarter. So I see this, 53 and 3 quarters, and this one, 
is 61 and a quarter, so I'm going to make it 61 and a quarter. Well, what would happen is I'm going to go make my thing, and I'm, I'm smart because I've measured both the top and the bottom now, and I've taken the biggest of the, of the two lines, and I've said that's going to be the width of my face frame. So again, once you set that in, what happened to this area here? And I'll zoom in because that's going to be perfectly, um, you know, perfectly like that. Now, if I've made the face frame this, uh, you know, this wide, so to speak, 61, and I didn't go all the way to the bottom, then I'm going to be missing uh, 1 and 39. So let's just call that 1 and a half and another uh, one and uh, that's, that's, yeah, whatever. Let's say it's one and a half inches short on each side. I'm going to have a one and a half inch gap down here and a one and a half inch gap up here. Why? Because I didn't take my measurement at the widest point that I possibly could to know that my face frame has to be wider or just a hair wider than the widest point, assuming no other anomalies in the wall. Okay, so you can see that these are two, again, very exaggerated circumstances. Yours will probably never be this bad unless the, the walls were designed to be in a trapezoid shape or a rhombus shape. And then you would use a different technique to approach the built-in. You wouldn't do it the way I'm showing you right now with just, you know, aiming for the best and hoping to scribe to fit a space that needs, you know, five or six inches of face frame chopped off of each side. That's just not going to work. So in any case, I just wanted to show you um, some of the pitfalls to watch out for when you're scribing and the fact that, you know, it just takes, a, you know, a level or if you're, if you have the money to invest in a laser line, a, you know, like they call it a laser plumb bob or whatever it is, something that can help you very quickly find, you know, how far out you are from the wall if the walls are, you know, badly tilted and, you know, you know, 10 inches isn't going to happen, but, you know, half inch, three quarters, an inch, maybe? That's not unreasonable in older homes to have, you know, the ceiling, you know, an inch out of plumb, you know? So, you know, especially in older homes, it's worthwhile throwing a level up there, you know, doing some calculations, um, you know, to try to determine what the width of your face frame should be. And then when you actually scribe it, I can't show you this physically on the video, but I'll just give you a sneak peek into the to the next video. When you actually scribe something that fits between two walls, there are several ways to do it, by the way. This is only one way, and I've done it like three or four different ways, and I plan to show you all of them as usual to give you information overload. But in any case, um, what I will do is I will take that face frame and come into the room, e either whether it's attached to the cabinet or not, and I will put the face frame against this wall, um, with the cabinet kind of sticking out, uh, you know, on this side. Because obviously, if your face frames are a little bit wider than the space, it isn't going to make it. So, I have a bar barking dog. You have to forgive the dog here. But in any case, um, you know, I'll fit one edge in. I'll take my compass or whatever, my and I'll draw my scribe line. Then I'll take that cabinet outside, put it on some sawhorses, and sand down the thing until it fits reasonably close. And then I'll just repeat that exercise on the other side. And then I'll keep scribing a little bit, shaving a little bit, until I get the perfect fit that I want. So there's there's other ways to do it. Obviously, I've done it. I've done it a couple different ways, which I'll show you as I said. But that's pretty much it for this video. Again, always longer than. I want them to be to try to get you some information, but I hope you were able to not nod off and fall asleep while you're listening to it. And I hope this information has been somewhat helpful, at least in thinking about how you, um, you know, prepare the space or prepare your cabinets to fit into the space. So hope you enjoy the video and I'll see you next time around. Thanks.